today as we use as our sermon topic, something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen to you and for you. Something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen to you and for you. Can you look at somebody and tell them something good, something miraculous <laughs> in 2023 is getting ready to happen to you and for you. And if you believe it for yourself, you can give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory. Something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen to you and for you. Something good, something miraculous is getting ready, Dr. Goldstein, to happen to you and for you. Something good. Brother Jeffries, it's getting ready to happen to you and for you. Not only good, but miraculous in the name of Jesus. Reverend Bell feels something good, <laughs> something miraculous is getting ready to happen to you and for you. Ebenezer, something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen to you and for you. After all you've been through, you mean the Lord did not take you through because he has something better for you? The devil is a liar. Do I have some witnesses in the house that know that this is going to be your year to have something good happen to you, have something good happen for you? And if you believe it, put those sanctified hands together and give the Lord's name the honor but the praise and the glory. That's right. <laughs> Give a neighbor a holy high five and say, I believe it. And that settles it. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. 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 I see folks. <laughs> Social distancing is no longer in order. If you want to cross the pews, and cross the aisle and give somebody a holy high five and tell them something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen for you and to you. For somebody's gonna happen this week. For somebody's gonna happen next week. For somebody's gonna happen next month. For somebody's gonna happen in July. For somebody's gonna happen in October. For somebody, it's going to happen in December. But does anybody know that it is going to happen to you and for you? Streaming family, something good, something miraculous is going to happen to you and for you in the name of Jesus. And if you believe it for yourself, you'll be right to throw your head back and say, I believe it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus had just told Simon, Peter, launch out into the deep because it's time to try something new. And anytime you try something new, normally there's some objection because you've gotten used to what you've been doing, especially if you've been doing it for a long time. And so Peter came up with his objections. He said, Master, we have been fishing all night and haven't caught nothing. Has anybody ever gone through a time or a season of disappointment where you have toiled for a long time and there were no results? Anybody, you've been in a marriage for a long time and it has not worked out the way you wanted it to work out. Anybody, you were in a relationship for a long time and it did not work out the way you wanted it to work out. Any parents have children, and the children have not acted like you want them to act. Any children have parents, and they didn't understand what it was you were going through. Anybody on your job, you've been toiling and working hard for a long time, and you have not gotten what you think you should have gotten from that job. Anybody, your bills are high, and your money is low, and you have repairs here, and have to do something else financial there, and it hasn't worked out as you want it to work out. Anybody spiritually, it has not worked out as you wanted it to 
to work out. Well, that was Peter. And Peter added to it, not only that, but we fished all night and caught nothing. You would have thought he would at least catch one little fish. You would have thought he would have catch at least three little fish, maybe five. Has anybody, not only didn't work out, you didn't catch nothing, which added to the frustration of what you're going through. But the key word in this first verse of chapter number five is the fact that he began by saying, Master. <laughs> if you're ever going through anything, if you're going through anything, make sure you begin your frustration by letting you know and him know that he is still King of Kings, Lord of Lords. He is still your salvation. He's still your savior. He's still the one that makes ways out of no ways. He's still the one that puts the sun in the sky. He's still the one that makes the moon glow. He's still the one that makes a cow moo. He's still the one that makes a dog bark. He's still the one that makes a cow meow. He's still the one that does exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you could think or imagine. So Peter, in the midst of his disappointment, in the midst of his frustration, was still able to say, Master, can you look at somebody and say, he's still the master. He's master of my disappointments. He's master of my dis heartbreaks. He's master of my health challenges. Whatever I'm going through, he is still master. So therefore, what I'm going through, I believe there's a power that can take me through. Do I have a witness in the house? And right after he said that, Peter then said, nevertheless. Nevertheless means I've gone through something that I may not have made it through, but since I know that you're going to get me through, I'm going to say nevertheless. Nevertheless means I haven't gotten the breakthrough yet, but I'm believing it's on the way, not by my might, not by my power, but by thy spirit saith the Lord. Nevertheless means when Damar Hamilton gets a, Hamlin gets a, a heart attack on a football field, football players start to form a prayer circle because it's a nevertheless situation. And because of prayer, some of those commentators no longer were showing the NFL players praying at the end of the football game because they didn't like the two opposing teams coming together in prayer. But at that moment, the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals formed the prayer circle. I thank Reverend Farmer for sending me a, a story about which one of the news reporters actually had prayer on air. When have you ever seen somebody on a newscast going to God. I don't mean he said, let's bow our heads in a moment of silence. He went in and started praying on a sport. In other words, prayer all of a sudden has come in vogue. Some of you had work persons that used to laugh at you, neighbors that used to laugh at you, co-workers that put you down. Oh, but now, after they've seen the miracle working of what's happened with Brother Hamlin, prayer is back in fashion. Can you look at somebody and tell them, I didn't have to wait until last Monday to know that God is a prayer answering God. Matter of fact, Brother Cooper, almost went through the same thing right here at Ebenezer. We lifted the Lord's name up in prayer and by New Year's Eve, when Brother Cooper was in the house of God giving the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory. Does anybody know if you're going through anything, but if you put God's word at the beginning of what you're going through, God can get you through. That's why Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word. Uh, it ain't what you can do. It's at thy word. Thy word says that by your stripes I'm healed. At your word. Your word said even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Your word said, uh, your water when I'm thirsty, your bread when I'm hungry. Your word says I can do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you could think. Or imagine, I'm trying to let somebody know, if you put the word on it, God will put a promise to it. Do I have anybody in the house that got rid of your pity party, that got rid of your woe is me, and started putting the word on it? And when you put the word on it, you saw God start to move in miraculous ways. That's why Peter, 
was able to know that something good was going to happen. It was not because he wished it to happen. It was not that he hoped it would happen. It's because he put a word on it. Do I have anybody today that's going to put a word on your situation, a word on your marriage, a word on your children, a word on your parents, a word on your job, a word on your situation. And when you do, that's when something good is getting ready to happen. Do I have a witness in the house? And so Peter said, at thy word, I will cast my net down. Look at somebody and say, I. Peter said, I will cast my net. And then the Bible says, after Peter cast his net down, they then said, we. God bless you, sweetheart. Yes, thank you so much. Can you give our children a hand, praise? Sometimes even our children will know. At thy word. <laughs> Come on now. A child shall lead them. That was your confirmation that at the word of the Lord, God is getting ready to do exceedingly. And I see God in her coming up because the point I was trying to make before she came was that Peter said, I. But then the word of God says that they cast their nets and they got a blessing and they had so many fish that they were unable to take it in and they called their partners to come and get some more blessing because they was getting ready to break the nets. Peter started off, I dropped my net, but the word of God says that they got the blessing. I'm trying to let somebody know something good is getting ready to happen to you. But you shall be a conduit for blessings helping others. It'll start with I, but then your children will be connected to your blessing. Your parents shall be connected to your blessing. Your neighbors will be connected to your blessing. Your church members shall be connected to your blessing. In other words, when God says something good is getting ready to happen to you, this is not me, myself, and I. This is not my four and no more. God says, I'm going to connect your blessings with other people that are connected to you. Peter dropped the net, but his partners were the one that also got the blessing. Can anybody give the Lord's name the praise for a mama who prayed for you, a daddy who prayed for you, a loved one who prayed for you, and the blessings flow from them down to you. And here you are the second Sunday of 2023 being blessed, not because of what you have done, but grace woke you up this morning. Grace started you on your way. In other words, this ain't about you, but this is about what God wants to do through you. Give a neighbor a holy high five and say, get ready. My blessing is going to affect you. Yeah. Matter of fact, look down your road and say, this road is getting ready to be blessed because I'm blessed. You're blessed, and this whole road is getting ready to be blessed. Yeah, but not only your road, you're blessed, and because you're blessed, Ebenezer is blessed. But get ready, and because Ebenezer is blessed, the community shall be blessed, and because the community shall be blessed, the world shall be blessed. It starts with one. But does anyone know God can do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you could think or imagine? Yeah, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, mother, you and me, brother, 
you and me, sister, in his hands. Yeah, your blessing is going to touch the whole wide world. Look at somebody and say, get ready. For God is getting ready to connect the dots because something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen for you and to you. Can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Hallelujah. Tell him to stand right where he is. Hallelujah. Something good is getting ready to happen to you and your son by the stripes of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You are healed today at his word. By his stripes, you are healed. It took a little time to walk down, but God says when you get up, you shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Can somebody give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Hallelujah. 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 Look at somebody real quick and tell them something good. Something miraculous is getting ready to happen to you and for you. Hallelujah. And so Peter got blessed. His partners got blessed. But then his partners were so blessed, they called the other ship so they could be blessed. Look at what God did. Peter got blessed. His partners got blessed. And his partners called Peter to be blessed. But not only that, James and John got blessed. Can you look at somebody and say, get ready for God to start to connect the dots. Yeah. Hallelujah. When you look back over your life, one good day has turned into a miraculous day. Look what God did. He said, Peter, this is a good day. It started off as a bad night, but now it's turned into a good day. Your partners have been blessed, and your partners became a witness so that James and John could be blessed. Don't ever keep it to yourself. You don't have to have an evangelist license to go out and tell somebody your testimony, what the Lord has done for you. And when you share your testimony, God's gonna bless them too. Do I have a witness that somebody testified to you and here you are in church, not because you had done it by yourself, you had left the fellowship and now God brought you back to the fellowship because somebody gave a testimony as to how good God is and how worthy he is to be praised. And if that's you, can you give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory? Now that was the good part. Look at the miraculous part. <laughs> I love Jesus. Anybody beside me love Jesus? I said I love Jesus. Right after that, Jesus said, Peter, this is the miracle, not the fish. The miracle is not the money. The miracle is not the house. The miracle is not the car. The miracle is not the clothes. The miracle is not the job. The miracle is what this is going to be a foundation for other things that are getting ready to happen. Because Peter, this is all about your destiny. Peter, this is all about your future because soon you'll no longer be worried about how many fish you do or do not catch. For I'm getting ready to make you fishers of men. I know you can't understand it yet because what I'm getting ready to do, Peter, is going to blow your mind. Eyes can't see it. 
ears can't hear it and your mind can't comprehend it because it's going to be exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you could think or imagine. Can you look at somebody real quick and tell them something is getting ready to happen miraculously for you? Yeah. What happened next? Peter's mother-in-law, who was sick, got healed. What happened next? And Peter was in Caesarea Philippi. And Jesus asked, who do men and women say that I have? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. What happened next? Peter was on the Mount of Transfiguration. Who was with him, Pastor? I'm glad you asked. James and John. And he taught Jesus being transfigured. Well, what happened next? Well, right after that, Jesus walked on the water. Peter was about to drown. And Jesus picked him up and got him onto safe shores. Anybody here almost drowned? But Jesus came in the nick of time. Well, what happened after that? Well, right after communion Sunday, Peter denied him. Anybody lost your focus? Anybody here lost track of what God was trying to do for you and through you? Peter denied Jesus for a lot of folk. You would have thought that would end the destiny and the purpose on Peter's life. But does anybody know grace has brought you safe thus far? It ain't about you. It's what Jesus wants to do for you and through you. So you're covered by grace. Even when you mess up, you're covered by grace. Even when you slip and fall, you're covered by grace. Even when you make a mistake, you're covered by grace. Anybody glad that God is not a God of a second chance? But he gave you chance after chance after chance. Yeah. And when Peter realized that God is loving, God is gracious, then God used Peter on the day of Pentecost to preach a sermon where 3,000 persons got saved. Your past will not determine your future. And if you believe that God still has a blessing with your name on it, with your messed up self, with your mistake written self, but God looks beyond your fault and sees your needs. Do I have any sinners in my house that have been saved by grace? He's connecting the dots. And after that, Peter became the chief cornerstone of the gospel. In other words, way back in Luke chapter 5, God was seeing Peter in Acts chapter 5. Does anybody know God's connecting your dots when you were young and he's still connecting your dots when you get old? I thank God for a pancake house. Yeah, but it wasn't about pancakes. God was connecting the dots. Right after that, I had a car accident. I should have lost my life, but God was gracious. He was connecting the dots. Right after that, I started reading the word, and God called me to preach. He was connecting the dots. Wanted to go to ITC in Atlanta, but I called Dean Jones at Howard. He got me into Howard. He was connecting the dots. Atlanta was not our destiny. Washington, D.C., he was connecting the dots. And got the Hemingway Memorial. God was connecting the dots. Met Bishop John Hurst Adams. God was connecting the dots. They were moving a church from Georgetown to Fort Washington to Maryland. God was connecting the dots. I was a substitute teacher teaching in physical ed. A volleyball hit me in the eye. I had to go home. When I got home, the telephone rang. Bishop Adams said, Granger, there's a church in Fort Washington, Maryland. If you go, God's 
gonna bless you. He was connecting the dots, was pumping gas at the gas station right beside the church. God showed me 33 acres and said, that land is your land. He was connecting the dots and here we are worshiping God on lion. The Ku Klux Klan used to rally on. You dare make me doubt him. I know too much about him. Too much about his goodness. Too much about his love. Can you look at somebody and say, the dots are still being connected. Get ready for God is getting ready to do something good for you something miraculous for you how do i know because hallelujah they put him in the ground god was still doing something good friday still doing something good saturday still doing something good and early easter sunday morning the miracle the miracle of all miracles took place yeah but God wants somebody to know your Pentecost is on the way. Yeah, get ready for a mighty Russian wind. This ain't a Northeaster, but this is the Holy Ghost blowing on you to let you know Something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen for you. Can you raise your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Eternal God, our Father, we come realizing 2020 there were some disappointments. 2021 there were some disappointments. 2020 there have been some disappointments. Some we loved are no longer here. Jobs we had no longer survived. Situations were such that we felt lonely down in despair, wondering if a way was ever gonna be made. And now you brought us to 2023, able to worship you in your house again in spirit and in truth. And we come today just to say thank you. Millions didn't make it but I thank you we're one of the ones who did. And you allowed us to make it because you have a purpose on our life. You have a destiny on our life. Regardless of how we started, we want to say thank you that you have a purpose that's going to end with something good, with something miraculous. So on this second Sunday of 2023, we claim it to be so. We're not standing a word about what it looks like but we're standing on your word for what it's gonna be like. So may your people stand with expectation and anticipation that the best is yet to come and that something good, something miraculous is getting ready to happen for them and to them. In the name of Jesus, can everybody who believes it give the Lord's name the honor, the praise, and the glory. Please stand on the church. Can you give somebody a holy high five and say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen.